Is there anybody else there? Or are we still wandering around like a lunatic? I don't know. This is not a happy person. No, I am absolutely fine. So I think I'm just going to stay with this one. She's looking exceedingly worried. I do hope this is going to work. Uh, it's feeling sort of less than happy. If there's anybody out there, tell me that you are there. Uh, so that I know whether this is actually working or not. Hello, Raven, I love you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, well, I hope it's not as perishing cold with you, Raven, as it is with me, because it's bloody parky here. And I've now got my sort of sweater on and everything else. And um, <sighs> it'll get back to being June at some point, but at the moment I am not complaining about rain. So, hi. Oh, I'm glad the sound's great. Yeah, I shall keep on talking. Now, if I wobble backwards and forwards like this, we're absolutely having no, no effect on the sound, even if you're getting dizzy, and I'm getting dizzy too. Hopefully. So, where were we? <laughs> hi, Joe. We were at Talking With Spirits last time. And I said it would get, go further. And I'm just having all this tree time at the moment. I'm having so much tree time. It's really nice. And they're, they're coming up and they're saying, do it and do it. Hi, Michelle. And good, good. Yep, that's fine. Um, and so trees it is. Now, I thought that I could share screen with you, but I don't know whether I can. If you don't mind, I will try and give it a whirl because it would be nice to do that if I can. So let's see if I can bring up a tree photo for you. And come on, tree. I know you're in there somewhere. I've got a cat. So surprise you, you say. I know. Right. Now, I wonder if I can share this with you, because this tree is quite and utterly stunning. No, it says I can't. So, there we go. That was a nice idea. So, all right, we're not going to do it with trees. But what has come up, and I don't know who else uses this um, particular tarot, but I use the Greenwood Tarot quite a lot. It's by, well, it's by, you can see, hang on, you will want to get my fingers out of the way, Mark Ryan and Cheska Potter. Now, Cheska Potter is one of my favourite artists, particularly for this sort of thing. And Mark Ryan, who I met years and years and years ago, is very good too. And theirs was called the Greenwood Tarot. I don't think you can get it anymore now, so, you know, I've got this archival thing. Um, I love the front of it and the the shaman they totally don't know what gender you are shaman um, sat in the in the woods with her his drum her drum I'm not going to try try not to be genderish on this because i don't think cheska meant me to be and sat in the woods being green and on her <coughs> shoulder cloak is a variation of the green woman or the green man. Now, Cheska and Ryan's pack is called the Greenwood Tarot, which brings me back to trees again. And as you can see, it says the pre-Celtic shamanism of the mythic forest. Now, yeah, I mean, that's what really sort of grabbed me um, when I saw she got it out. And I thought, no, no, I have to get that. It's very different to John's in the way it works and in some ways closer to something like the Rider, Rider Weight pack because she has um, Major Arcana and then the four suits. But I'm not going to use the suits today. Uh, we'll be here forever. But I am going to use some of the cards, and the one that really, really came up for me with trees and the wood 
is this one. Now, I just love this. Let's see here. The owl. And the owl, you see, she has her cloak. Her wing is her cloak, and it's covering things under here. It's covering animals and people and trees and grass and little plants even, and stones and the stones. And she also carries in her other hand, <coughs> or other wing, or whatever it is. It looks a bit like a hat to me. I can never, I can't back cars either. Um, she has her light, and it really is a light. And so she folds her cloak over everything, and she also holds her light to light everything. And she looks back over her shoulder to see if we're there, to see if we're coming, we're coming with her. And I've had this feeling all week, well, even longer than that, about her, that the owl woman is with me. And there are owls all around us now, and a friend has just offered me um, an owl box, a tawny owl box, because uh, she hasn't got somewhere to put it. And the farmer next door to me w does have, and so we're going to have more owls closer. But we have these, we have, we have owls. We also do have barn owls, and you can tell by her face that she is a barn owl. She's not a tawny owl. Um, although Cheska's done her quite a dark brown, but she's different. But she's an owl, and owls, despite Harry Potter saying they were rather dumb messengers, um, owls are not. They are deep, dark birds of the night, holding the night wisdom. And the night wisdom is a forest. You know, so many animals are forest animals. Did you know cows are forest animals, really? They're, they're very related to the deer, but they're the same, they're ruminants as the deer are. The original, g much more goat-like sheep, um, <coughs> they also used forest and used browsing. And pigs live much, much better in the woods. I had a friend down in Hereford who was one of the people who taught keeping pigs in the woods. And he had the most beautiful pigs, and they lived in the wood. They're big, gorgeous, red-brown Tamworth pigs. And they are absolutely huge. I mean, they stand four foot to the shoulder at least, the sow, and the boar probably even higher. And you get one in a 12-foot room, and there's no room for anybody else in there. Um, it's like a tank coming along. But they are gorgeous, and the piglings are gorgeous too. And we used to get um, meat from him, the pork and sausages and chops and everything. And it was amazing, it was so delicious, because the pigs had ate naturally, they'd eaten what they wanted. He gave them extra as well, but it was good extra. And they were able to eat of the forest and eat of the worms and the grubs in the ground, because they're omnivorous like us, pigs are, they're not vegetarian. And it just makes that difference. And they were so happy. And um, if I could share a screen, I could share a screen with you <laughs> and show you um, pictures of them, because they were really, really good, and of me with them. But anyway, animals, so many animals and birds are forest animals. And of course, our Earth used to be 80% covered in forest. Uh, maybe 70% come the end of the Paleolithic, beginning of the Neolithic. And it's only since then that we've cut the forests down and we've made our fields and our agriculture. So the land is naturally attuned to trees. As I said, I've been able to walk amongst trees up on, in what used to be called probably still is, by, by the old folk, the long forest, which is the forest all along the top of the Wenlock Edge, and all down the sides of it still too, mostly. And it is amazing, because it really is old. And uh, I was walking up Holloway, where the friend the other day, and she's counted 15 species of trees in something like 100 foot, um, 
100 yards rather, um, there, which means that forest is at least 1,500 years old. Now, being a hollow way, it's like this, you know, it's a V-shape with huge tall banks above it, way over our heads, because it's been walked and walked and walked and walked and walked and walked for literally thousands of years. And so it's, it's, the path has been, been walked into the land. And, oh, there are all sorts of trees, and the um, later ones like lime and beech, uh, the oak, of course, uh, uh, birch, holly, hazel, uh, my brain's going to go. Anyway, there were, all our native trees were there. And, and as I said, and some post-Ice Age ones like, but, like beech and lime. But they were, they held the place, and the old road held the place. Now, you probably mostly know that I'm quite crippled, and um, I've got rheumatoid arthritis and osteoporosis, and new knees and new shoulder, and broken bones in my back, and broken feet, and you know, it's like. If only I could go down the shop and get a new body, it would be all right. <laughs> but no, I'm very happy with this one, it's fine. And we get on very well. But it means I can't walk like I used to be able to. And when we came, we, when we parked, we parked at the bottom of the hill. And that, so the first bit was up, you know. And it was a man-made path, um, quite wide and easy, you know, about eight or ten feet wide. and reasonably flat going, uh, you know, it's even going, but the slope was sort of like this. And so sort of I'd go up about 10 or 15 yards and stop and pant for a bit and then we'd go on a bit. And one log edge is quite high. Anyway, we get up there. And I'm fine with this, I'm not unhappy at all. I get up there and um, it's lovely and so I feel right, it's down here again, so you've got a bit of a level and then a bit downhill and then we're going to go up again so that was fine oh, and it was lovely and we met some more beautiful trees and then we got to the holloway and we turned back up to it and the holloway path was like this too and really narrow you know we couldn't walk side by side down it and the trees overarching us, so you're you're literally in this hollow way, this almost like a tube within the forest and within the earth almost. It's it's like being inside her. And so we went up that, and um, it was easy. So I said to my friend, you know, I said, you know how I was walking on the first uphill? She said, yeah. She said, I'm, I said, I'm motoring now. I'm really going. He said, you are, yeah, you are. And so I said, it's a dragon line. And it is. Now, I don't know what you know about dragon lines. and um, It gets very confusing, and they get confused. Um, are they ley lines? Well, sometimes they are. Um, are they the same thing? Well, no, because ley lines are always straight, and dragon lines are not. Um, deer trods, are they deer trods? Yes, they very often are. They are ancient deer trods as well as dragon lines. And they are threads that carry the Earth energy through the Earth. A bit like the mycorrhiza, who carry the energy, the, fun the fungal threads that carry the energy and the food and the water and the communication between the trees and between the other plants. And that this, that's so important because the whole of the plant life, the whole of the plant kingdom on any continent is a community, or should be, it was, once, before we started busting the mycorrhiza. Like, the whole of Britain, to the edges of the sea, everywhere, all the plants could talk to each other. They were all on the internet. It's a plant internet. Um, but it does more, I and mean, we can only talk down our internet, but they can give each other food and water and get stuff from other places. It's not really quite like Amazon, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you 
trying to think of modern thought, modern ideas that would be the same, but it's certainly a plant internet. And then we've cut it. And not only we've cut it, we've ploughed it. And we plough it nowadays, we plough it really deep. I mean, you, you've seen the size of ploughshare. I mean, that's not it. it a ploughshare is generally two feet, you know, two sort of 70 centimetres deep. And that digs into the land, often below the topsoil. And it cuts the mycorrhiza. Think about that. When your internet gets cut off, and you say, oh, I was talking to him, her, I was doing an email, oh, and it's gone, and it's, where is it, what's happened, you know, quick grab the router, press the, re press the reset button, turn the electric on and off, you know, turn the computer on and off, you know, generalised panic. Imagine how that was for the plant kingdom, all of a sudden. Your whole communication was gone. Cut off. Ploughed through. So there you were talking to Grandma, you know, a couple of forests over, quite easily. And Grandma Tree, who is part of you. And all of a sudden you cut off. And lots of us not me particularly, because I'm very much a solitary person. But lots of people have been very, I can't talk to anybody. It, it's awful. I'm all alone. Right through lockdown, which is partly why I think everybody's sort of rushing out now they feel they can, um, because they can't stand being alone anymore. So how do you think it was for that tree who was there chatting to Grandma a couple of forests over? And the line was cut. And it never came back. And they could never talk again. That's what trees are. They're holders. They're holders of everything. Um, one of the reasons why, you know, they could make a big difference to climate change, depending on us, not them, and uh, what we do, whether we allow them to live and to be planted, is that they all talk to each other. Do you know, they talk to you too. They will do. I'm sure you do know. You must, I think probably everybody here who's with me has actually talked to a tree. I would have thought quite a lot of you have had an answer from a tree too. So. You've become part of their network. They've allowed you in. You don't have the mycorrhiza threads. You've only got spirit threads connecting you, but there's nothing wrong with them. They work like mag magic. They are magic. You are suddenly part of their network. And if, instead of just you know, bringing the shopping list of what you want, or talking to them, or some people which I've actually seen they're talking at the tree and um, if you actually sort of say hi mind if I sit down and have a chat and then shut up you know duct tape and sit down and hold these forward you know if you were here you'd be doing that and listen and Listening is such a funny old thing because you don't listen just with your ears and you don't listen just for sounds like I'm there blathering on making sounds. But I'm sure some of you are actually watching my face and watching my movements and, oh. <laughs> and um, you're getting a lot from that, which is why we like to be able to see somebody when we talk, as well as the words that I'm actually saying. But trees also talk in pictures, and they will show you pictures, and they'll take you little journeys. It's like being on a film, and show you things. And they may talk to you just because the breeze touches your skin, or a branch touches your skin, 
or the leaves rustle and you feel them touch your hair and or a little drop of rain comes through or sunlight woof, and all of a sudden you can't see because a sudden spark of sunlight has come in the side of your eye and it's all gone colors and it's all amazing there are lots and lots of ways to talk and trees use them and they show us how to use them too they're really good you know, next time you go to a tree go as if this was a person uh, that you wish to make friends with and sit down and say, hi, why don't I sit down for a minute? I mean, it, you might get in the feeling that not now I'm busy. I mean, you do occasionally get that and sometimes they really are. So, you know, take notice. But sit down beside when you get the invite and just say, tell me about it. And then shut up and watch and listen and feel and sense. You may even get the taste of the wind. It's wonderful. And you become part of the tree's network, part of the tree's intercommunication inter called stuff. God, that was a long word. And you're there on the tree's network, on the tree's internet. And gradually you say, well, I think my friend Beech Tree over here has got something to say. And you get, oh, that way. Then you, oh, that way. And, oh, yeah. And if it gets too much, hey, hey, guys, guys, I'm only a human. I can't handle all this. Can we just slow down, have one or two of you at a time? It's quite okay to say that. Particularly if you say, hey, look, I'm just a human. I'm not really good at this. I'm learning. And I can't handle all this massive oh, packets of information going around all the time. And I say, oh, sorry, forgot you were a human. That's really nice. If they actually did forget you were a human, you wow, all of a sudden they thought I was another tree. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. And you become part of this wholeness. Now, let me go back a minute to Madame Owl. She's Madame Owl to me. She is so Madame Owl. It's like her wing, in another sense, is part of the network that is covering everybody, the cloak. And under her cloak, you can hear and feel and see better. Now, owl spirit can be the size of a barn owl, which is tiny or the size of a tawny owl, which is only a little bit bigger. Or it can feel so huge that it's covering the whole forest. See what you find. You go and say, um, what mind talking to owl? Owl the seer, show me how to see, please, the seer. And bring me under your wing. Try it sometime. And then, You'll probably get to be like her or him. I will get there. I'll probably improve my backings as well. Be like her or him. Be like the shaman who is just themselves. And they're part of the tree and part of the forest and part of the ground and part of the land and the sky and the light above. And they have their wonderful vibrating instrument, the drum. The drums are quite amazing for that, as I'm sure you know. And it's something about the throbbing and the sound and the fact that sound waves do actually impinge on your skin. You feel them, you don't just hear them, you feel them. And it's like she, I'm going to say it, becomes her or is overshadowed by her so that her influence comes out through her or him. And that's where we're all going when we start walking this path, so that we can be vessels and allow other world, allow wonderful otherworldly beings like this to come through us, perhaps like this. You don't have to have a drum. Let me say that first off. Yeah, we like drums. 
but you don't have to have one and you don't have to have antlers on your head and you don't have to have anything else in order for the owl spirit to come through you or the tree spirit to come through you. You can be sat here in your ordinary sweatshirt, in your ordinary room, and it can still happen. So don't, don't put those things in boxes and thereby restrict yourself from accessing them, except when you're in that box too. Really important point that. Boxes are no good, they don't work. They're very human, not good human stuff. Stay out of boxes. Okay, more trees. So this part was getting through me. Well, no, no, we're gonna do these two very quickly first because these are so much part of the wood. Oops. Back a bit. Here we go. Green man and green woman. Very similar. And yet not. They both have the tree coming through them, as I was just saying. Through their mouths, through their eyes, through their ears. And that's like saying the same thing that I was just saying, that you're part of the tree. The tree is able to talk through you. And that's what green woman and green man are, partly. You know, it's a big part of what they are. They are enablers that the trees can talk through them. And they hold, let's get this right, goddess and god. The goddess who is, you see she's the dragons and she's the, the maze, the labyrinth rather, that is the life and she is the womb and she is the drum and everything. And he is the spark and the guardian. He looks after her and she, whoops, she is the one who gives him sovereignty. He's only king because of her. She is the power, she is the earth, and he is the guardian, the guardian spirit who looks after the earth. Think about that when you go in amongst the trees too. It's quite important. Okay, right, I might come back to this in a minute. So who wants to be, no well, of course, absolutely. <sighs> there we go. Well, so many of the European and Northern European traditions have a world tree. And I think this does spread around the world in other places as well. I'm not absolutely sure, because I haven't researched, whether it is a particularly Northern Hemisphere thing, and they do it differently in the Southern Hemisphere, or whether they have it there too. So, you know, maybe if anybody knows, can you enlighten me? And same as with um, Green Woman just now, the tree stands at the center of the labyrinth. Now that is a labyrinth, it's not a maze, you don't get confused. Um, if you like to follow those paths, you will end up, you go in and out, in and out, um, around, the ra around it, but you end up in the center. And when you've done whatever it is you need to do at the center, you turn around and you come out in reverse of the way you went in, in and out, in and out on the rings, and you come out in the same way of this, the entry here. And that, the tree is very much saying that, that you know, you live your life and you go into the center to find things and you come out to give them to people and show them to people and do things for the earth particularly. And then you go in again to the center and get some more wisdom and knowledge and findings and ideas and things and you come out and you give that back to the earth and the garden and the trees and your cat and wh whoever needs it around you. So it's this continuous in and out. The goddess, the tree, the goddess, sits at the center holding the wisdom. And in that sense, the green man is the one who comes in, comes, goes into her and comes out and gives it away and comes back in to get some more and then comes out to give it away again, which is what we are. So regardless of what current gender you are wearing in your body, you are a guardian king, 
a guardian of the goddess. Bit odd, but maybe that's a bit deep. We'll pull back from that. But the world tree, of course, is the tree that holds things together. Now, I'm going to um, be able soon, I think, to introduce my friend Fiona Dove, who is going to do her rune course online. Um, it's stunning. She's fantastic. And she will be talking, too, about world trees. And for her, it will be, I think, Yggdrasil. And um, the serpent who twines around the tree and holds it all together. Now, let's see if I can get this back. Jormungand. Hope I got that right. Mm. I always have a panic. Anyway, he's the world serpent, and he's like Ouroboros, and he holds his tail in his mouth, holding everything together around the trunk of the tree. But again, you see how this tree thing comes. It's trees that are holding us together. And, you know, when we think back to climate change, and we're, we're all being asked to plant more trees, plant more trees, <laughs> please the gods, it happens. It's because they do hold it together. They take in what we give out, transmute it, literally, and then give it back as something else we can use. Water, earth, oxygen. And they take in all the CO2, well, they don't take it all in, it's put out too much. And we haven't taken in a too many trees away for them to be able to do that, but they take in the CO2 and they t convert it into oxygen. I mean, please, that is so amazing and so wonderful. And it's another way that trees hold us and are part of us. And we need to learn to be part of them again. So it's like, go sit by that tree with the duct tape, hello, duct tape your mouth and listen. And yet more trees. Yeah, well, he's quite determined. And this is, um, this is both British and European. Um, and, of course, reminds us of the North gods. Because this is how Odin finds the runes from hanging in the tree. And again, Fiona will tell us all about that when she gets around to her course. Hurry up, woman, hurry up. We're all panting for it. And it's the, the god. Now, this is nearly always the male, because this is the guardian who is learning again. And it's the masculine is the guardian. It hangs from the tree, and it's struck by lightning. And, you know, that's the inspiration thing, yeah? You know, you, oh! And, you know, the electricity goes right through you, and if it doesn't kill you, you are transformed. He's struck by lightning, and his bonds are cut as he becomes inspired, as the lightning works and changes him and wakes him up. And his bonds are cut, and he falls, and then he finds the runes, who we will learn about those, but they are another means of showing you how the world works. And again, he couldn't do that without the tree. And the tree also has to guide the lightning down to him and has to suffer. I mean, that tree has a broken branch, yeah? Whoa, there. And the lightning has come right down through it and broken it off to free him. So the tree sacrifices, gives an arm so that he can learn. Trees do this. Aren't they amazing? And, of course, as we learn, we also need to go off and be alone. Now, this one is, is the hermit, i.e. the loner, the one who goes off to learn. And it's a cave and a house within a tree. Now, that is so strong for me. I grew up on stories of the, of the, the tree that is a house that is a tree, that is also a castle and a tower, and all sorts of crazy things like that. In fact, I've got a story brewing quietly that is about that. 
and the hermit is clad in green and I love the door. Can you see? Get this right, get some light on it. Now, that is the door that he's going through, but to me, it's also a person. It's like an old woman. There's the round head at the top and the two arms on either side and a staff. So he has to go through a person in order to get to the learning. In this case, I think a female person, because it is going back into the womb that we learn, back into the darkness. And the wren, of course, is such a bird for us. Um, lovely story about the wren, which I'll just sort of briefly touch on. That all the animals were saying, and the birds were saying, who can fly highest, who can fly highest? And you know, they're all bragging away as to what they could do. And the eagle said, I can, I can do it, I can do it, you know. And so they all climb into the air and work their wings madly and climb up through the clouds. And the eagle does outstrip just about everybody. But even he finally comes to a place that he can't go any higher and he has to stop. And then out from under his feathers on his back comes the little wren and flies higher. So the wren becomes the bird who can fly highest of oh. all. And that's one of our stories. And I just love it. Because it's trickster. And it's, you know, it's not, whoa, he man, I can do it, I can do it. It's like, how can I get someone else to help me do this? And then I can do it. And Ren does. Wicked. Gorgeous. But Hermit goes into the tree to learn about this. And the tree holds the wisdom. Now, if only I could have done the share screen thing. Um, I will try this afternoon and put the pictures up on the uh, tail of this video and show you what I mean. Because where I used to live, there was a yew tree. Um, supposed to be mm, about 3,000 years old, I think. And she's huge. And she's this great barrel of a cauldron. And there's a a slit in her and you can get right in. she's inside there's no tree but she's growing beautifully and very well all from the outside of her bark but you get in and you get into the cauldron and to sit in there and um, I know one or two of you probably here have done that sat in that tree and you are in the mother's cauldron you are in the mother's womb and there are quite a lot of yew trees that do that and that are used for that and have always been used for that as a, a way in to feel yourself really to be part of the mother in the mother's womb. In the centre of, where's that blooming labyrinth gone? Um, in the centre of that labyrinth. Yeah? So, he goes in for that. And at some point he comes out, and this one I love. Cheska and Rowan have called it judgment. And considering what we've done to the planet and what we're doing to polar bears and how they're dying, I mean, this was made, oh, 30 years ago, this, this pack. Um, this is just so true on that level. But, the great white bear, the great bear and the little bear who point to our pole star, who show us the north, who give us direction and have enabled people to find their way around this planet for probably ever since humans have been on this planet and noticed the stars, which is probably almost immediately. It's the bear who stands on the mound and between two ginormous trees. I mean, they must be enormous. They have to be. Because he's standing on a mound and, and he is a bear who must be hundreds of feet high. And yet, he's standing there between the trees. And the hermit the hermit went into his tree 
yeah, and worked with the lovely old grandmother thing, creature there, and worked in the womb and learned his wisdom within the tree, within the, the womb of the tree. And then he comes out. And to me, this is his coming out. This is, he comes out of the tree, which is now perhaps a mound, same thing. Again, you're going into the womb. He comes out of the mound to go out between the stones and between the two trees, and there, above him, stands the bear. And the bear looks over him, as the great bear and the little bear do in the stars in our sky, and we'll always point them home. We'll always point them home to the pole star. So we need to go in, and we need to face, where's she gone? I've lost her, there she is. We need to face her dragons. Do you see she has the most beautiful dragons? And this incredible crazy tree spirit beside her, yeah? We have to walk her labyrinth, face her dragons, learn about ourselves, And this is what we do with trees. And when you go for a walk in a forest, lovely, preferable, as old as you can, but any tree will do. Even the one you only planted last year in your garden will work. They will. When you're with a tree, work with them, walk with them. Sit with them, talk with them, and with. Talking with means you listen as well. And you think about them and their needs, not just your own. And just be there with the trees. You may find you have to do a bit of apologizing for all the farming and plowing and the breaking up of the mycorrhiza and the rest of it that we do. And say, you know, you'll do whatever you can. And it can be really crazy stuff like your poetry might work um, to help people understand this and to help more trees come back and to help us stop breaking up the tree internet around the world. Plant internet, because they help all plants, not just themselves, not just trees. We're about the only selfish creature going. <laughs> so go and walk with trees, sit with trees, work with trees and enjoy trees. And I am going to go and make some tea. Because I'm gasping for a cup of tea. So, I will see you all next week. Thank you very much for being here. It's lovely. And thank you for helping me guide me. Because you being here guides me through the journey that the cards and the trees take me. So, ta very much, you people. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>